the difference between sort of the Anglo-Saxon view of the sea and the Viking view of the sea in the sources that we've got seems to be quite different. And I think um, you know the, the sort of common theory behind that is that the the Vikings were much better seafarers, and so they didn't fear the sea as much. They respected it, obviously, because you know you have to. Um, but for the Saxons, I, I think you know it was it was quite perilous. They were more much more wary of the sea, whereas the Vikings were able to utilize it a lot better, and so they had a more positive relationship. Hello, my name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And that voice you heard at the very beginning of this video was Dan Coltis, the author of Heathenry and the Sea, which is kind of the topic of today's video, both in the book form, but also the relationship between heathens, pagans, and the ocean, because it is something that is so tied to the past. I mean, most people think about the Vikings. I mean, the Vikings traversing across the ocean to get to North America is a very famous tale, something, you know, that um, you know, a lot of people know about uh, long ships, Viking raids, all these things, of course, happen across the sea. But something that I discovered when I first got into this faith, for people that relied so heavily on transport across the ocean and in boats, um, and relied so heavily on the sea for food, um, for money, for everything, and for something that made them so famous, there's not a lot about the ocean deities. I mean, we know very a little about Njord, Aegir, and Ron. And so the fact that this book exists, and it's this thick, it's decently thick, really made me excited. And so when Dan contacted me to do a review of this book, I said, of course I want to do a review. But this review turned into a little bit more of that because I want to discuss this book. I want to share more of the interview with you, but also discuss my relationship with uh, my faith and the sea because it's something that has evolved over time, especially as I became more part of a community. So without further ado, let's go ahead and discuss Heathenry and the Sea. The book and, you know, the actual thing. So like many people, I of course struggled being in a landlocked place like Kentucky um, to connect to the ocean deities. I always felt like it's something that it didn't really belong to me. Um, but of course, as Dan and I discussed, this isn't necessarily true. Um, as we explore throughout this video, I hope if you feel the same way that you begin to realize this as well. So that's really what I'm here to show you is that yes, you can connect to you know the beings of Njord, Aegir, Ron, and the other deities we talk about while not actually living near the sea. As far as me, I would say my experience leading up to this year is pretty limited. I did always feel connected to the moon, and I would say if I had a, an ocean deity I connected with, it was the moon, because obviously the moon has an immense amount of control over the ocean. I mean, it's the reason we have our tides. Um, I mean, you know, and according to Norse tales, that's Thor drinking from the horn, you know, draining the oceans. Uh, but now we know, of course, that it's the moon that actually pulls all those things up. That doesn't make it any less magical. I've discussed this before in a video in the past. I mean, the fact that the moon is somewhere out there and it is so powerful and so big that it has an invisible force that pulls our oceans and we can't visibly see it, but yet it has the power to move our oceans. And also, we're mostly water, so what kind of effect does the moon have on us? And that's something that has always fascinated me with the moon. But other than that, I always felt like I couldn't connect to these deities simply because I was in a place like Kentucky. But after reading this book and after discussing it with Dan, I really am starting to feel like I'm able to actually reach out and connect to these deities. So I may have talked about this before, but I do want to share our community experience with Njord, because obviously we've never had a gathering at an ocean on a beach or anything like that, not yet. But we have had ocean connections. We have had connections to the sea, um, to Njord, to, you know, maybe not necessarily Agar. We've never really done anything with Agar yet, but we will. Uh, but as far as Njord, I would say that's probably the most predominant um, ocean deity that we have connected to so far. And I think the most memorable one is we were on a shore very similar to this one, because it was another lake in Kentucky. Um, yeah, very similar to this lake. And uh, we had Zach in our community, Parker in our community, and Logan in our community all doing a like Vanir ceremony outside. And Zach came in with a very New York presence and kind of called out to New York. And we had everyone lined around the beach. We had a fire there and then the, the lake in the back. And keep in mind, this was December. And while we were just hailing the Vonic deities, hailing New York, like a bald eagle flew over and was just like you know screeching as it like flew over us um and every time we ha said hail like the vanir and stuff like that it echoed across the lake and they come forward past the fire tell us 
who you are offering to. Hail Freya! Hail Freya! Hail Freya! Hail New York! Um, so it was a really powerful experience uh, on the edge of that lake. Um, and then afterwards, I was just inspired in the moment uh, to, you know, start taking my clothes off. And I was like, I'm going to hop in that lake. I'm not doing it for this video. I do not have a towel or a spare change of clothes. And I bet it is still cold. Um, but we all ran into the lake and got in. And it was just a really, a really great experience. <laughs> This is recorded <laughs> because I care. <clears throat> right, not for blackmail. Yeah, come over with that hot tub. <laughs> Fire up the hot tub. <laughs> You know, the role that Agir and Ran play is is a very important one. You know, obviously Agir is as brewer of the gods and the pair of them hosting several feasts and stuff like that. Um, but whilst they're very, very important, there's only actually a couple of, of mentions. Um, Njord, again, um, you know, very, very important as sort of the elder Vanic deity. Um, and then obviously there's the story of his marriage to Skadi, but there's not actually a huge amount about what he does as a sea deity like you know it's said that you know he's the god of fishermen and prosperity and this but but there's not a huge amount of sort of stories recorded of him actually doing anything at sea or what he did um but yeah as you say like those th stories probably did exist at some point um because you know seafaring was such an important part of life for our ancestors back then I do want to draw attention to a couple of sections in this book that I really think make it worth your while. Um, so there are, is information, and first off, it is incredibly well researched. There are footnotes all across this book um, showing where he got all of his information, which I think is highly important when discussing a subject matter such as this. Um, but certain things that I've never actually considered. So it might be a minor thing, but Agir and Ron held feasts all the time, and Agir is kind of our brewing god, which is interesting that our deep ocean deity, who's also a Jotun, is the god of beer, essentially. Um, now, it's not directly, but he is the one that the gods always go to for the best brews, and they go to him for celebrations, and we see this throughout the Eddas. So as Ron as his wife, that also means traditionally in the, the way that Bronze Age and Iron Age like homes worked, essentially the wife was in charge of running the hall. And so if they had a feast or if they had something like that, she would be the one to host it. And so these parties were so well known and most of that was because of Ron. So she was also the hostess to the gods. And that's not something I ever really considered until reading this book, because I always saw Ron as the one that drove people down to Agir's Hall. And it was kind of seen as almost this like um, bad mermaid kind of vibe. Uh, but I think I understand Ron a little bit more now and see her more as this host figure and she's the host of the dead, the host of the gods. So I think she has a very similar role to Hell um, and you know as far as making everyone feel comfortable in her hall. Now something I also read in here, and this is coming from more of Dan's personal experiences, um, that I really really appreciated is um, his personal connections with Ron um, and Aegir, but mostly Ron because he was a submariner. He actually dove into the deep ocean. I mean, talk about a crazy experience to be in a submarine as a heathen, as a pagan, um, and reaching out and kind of connecting to those presences. So he kind of discusses those experiences in here um, as well as in our interview. Uh, so just really cool um, stories in there. There's also a section in this book talking about other deities that are associated with the ocean, because I think most people in this faith for a decent amount of time would know about Ron, Aegir, and Njord, 
but he suggests that there's other deities that are actually quite tied to the ocean, most notably Thor. And this is something I was like, the moment I read it, I was like, no, that makes sense because a lot of his stories involve water in some ways. Even Harbert's The Old, where he's arguing with Greybeard, is across a fjord. And then the story of him going to Heimaskivda when he goes and steals the cauldron from um, Hymir, which is Tyr's father, he has the run-in with Jormungandr while on a fishing boat. And of course, his whole relationship with Jormungandr. Um, so Thor is actually very tied to the ocean, it seems. And the idea of him fighting the ocean serpent, you know, the god of thunder, Thunder, thunderstorms above the ocean, above water. I mean, there's a lot of connections there for Thor that I never really, I guess I considered, but never really came to, you know, the conclusion of until after reading this. Other notable deities that I never considered, um, Uller might be con connected to the ocean. Now, of course, this is more of an argument than a fact, um, especially within this book, but the idea that Uller is tied to skating, to ice in some way, to water freezing over, or even possibly to glaciers out in sea or ice that forms over the ocean, I mean, I can kind of see it. Now, it's like, you know what? Maybe a little bit, but that's also when we start stretching a little bit more. Um, and then we also have Saga, which is a minor goddess that we don't know that much about. Well, I mean, she may have been a bigger goddess, but I, I say minor because we really don't know that much. We know that Odin and Saga drank together every day. And that's about it. But we also know the name of her hall, and it basically translates to Sunken Bank. And so the fact that her hall may be tied to the sea, and she might be tied to the sea, um, is another really interesting thing. Outside of just gods, there's other beings mentioned here. So we mentioned river goddesses, uh, spirits of the lake. Uh, there's mentionings of monsters like the Kraken as well. And my favorite monster, which I wrote it down in here because it's absolutely obscene, it's called the Mushbelly. I'll try to, here, I'll, I'll show you. Look at that. Look at that. That is like a serpent rat. A serpent rat that will attack ships. And then as if you actually make it to shore, it will then crawl onto shore and eat you anyways. Absolutely ter terrifying. So that's the mushbelly. Mushbelly? Terrifying. I hate it. So there's a lot of interesting things. So there's sections on that. Um, there's, there's really a lot. I mean, it goes into the runes. It goes into science. Uh, talks about the gods, of course, personal experiences, uh, shares the personal experiences of other people. Um, so again, very, very dense book for how, how thick it is um, and, and just a really good read. Uh, the thing I'll leave you with as far as the book that I also really appreciate is um, a section on ancestors, which again, this is another thing I never really considered. Um, so Dan, obviously being a sailor himself, being a seaman, he has other people in his family that have done the same. And so he actually connects with them through ancestor veneration, which I think is really cool. And so the idea of connecting with ancestors that did something similar to you and tying ancestors like, you know, something I, I hope to do in this video as well, is actually give an offering to my ancestors that traveled across the ocean, traveled across the seas, because that's something that my family would have had to do at some point coming to America. And I don't know the extent, I, I'm sure, Everyone in their ancestral line has someone tied to water, somewhere to fishing or being trading. Um, so again, just a really interesting connection I would have never realized unless I read this book. I've had experiences that a lot of people reading the book probably won't have done. Um, you know, obviously there are plenty of sailors out there, but it's not like the top of the most common jobs these days. Um, so I, I, I tried and I hope I have achieved it to make it clear, you know, what is UPG and what isn't what is my experience and what is writing about other things um but yeah you know I've, I've i've been quite um quite honest and open i think about some of my experiences one of my proofreaders was like are you sure you want to let people know this so like this is quite personal but you know to me it, it adds to the whole thing um oh is there a part about you and sirens in here somewhere in the <laughs> oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, you know, sort of, because um, I have had some some quite traumatic experiences at sea. Um, I mean, all all seafarers have those, you know, those stories where, you know, storms you didn't think you were going to get through, incidents and things like that. But I thought it was important to put those experiences in because they've influenced my spiritual perception of the sea and my understanding that, you know, yes, the sea is this provider. It provides food. It provides trade. Um, but it, you know, it also takes and you need to respect it.
So I have my little Niord uh, pendant here, a little Niord statue, and I've placed it here. So this is actually where I'm going to do my offering. Um, now I will say, you know, just because I've been told before, if you're doing rock stacking like this, just make sure it's not gonna harm the local ecosystem. Whereas here, this is like a floodplain. So basically this gets flooded all the time right here. So there's all these rocks move around all the time. So I don't think it's gonna be anything bad. Um, so I think something like this isn't too bad. And as long as it's not gonna harm the local ecosystem, um, but building rock cairns and building altars for the gods out in nature is something that we do know the ancestors did, and I think it's a really great way to connect with them. So building or finding something on the bed of a lake like I have here, um, I think is a really great way to you know bring a central point to it, because eventually the lake will come up right here. This will all be underwater, and it will take all of this with it, and obviously this won't last that long either. So this is actually where I'm going to pour the alcohol out. Um, it's kind of like around these rocks, um, and then I am still going to throw something into the lake here as an offering as well. Great ocean deity, Njord, Ron, Egil, Twelve Thor, Saga, Spirit, spirits that are watching me right now, whatever being may inhabit this waters, thank you for the adventure of today. I have a gift, a beer, I wish to give you, I wish to give this lake. I wish to give this beauty an acknowledgement for the powers of the water and what it has over us. Hail to the ocean deities. Hail to Njord. Hail to Aegir. Hail to Ron. The spirit. Ah, Aegir, what a great way to connect with you. Brood. So this is actually from a local area. So Aegir, god of brewing, I bring gifts of a beer for you and the ocean god. Hail to you, Aegir. I don't know what more to say. I'm looking for that connection. The ocean has always terrified me. Deep sea, deep water. And I think it is right to be feared. For we are powerless in it. And that's why it's so important to honor the gods that keep us above water. So to you, Njord, the god that guards the coast, and keeps us above our heads, above the sea. Hail to you, Njord. Glory to you, brother in arms. Glory to you, I raise a drink for your battles with the Midgard serpent and what lies deep, and what lies in evil. Hail to you, Thor, Thunderer, Protector. Lastly, I give to any ancestors who may have gone over the seas, who may have drowned, who may have traveled, who have traded, who have warred, to all the ancestors who looked at the sea as home, as beauty, as love, as goddess, as God. Hail all the ancestors who traversed those dangerous waters, and to the ones that traveled across these lands to get me here, I hail to you as well. So hail to my ancestors that traverse those dangerous seas and skull. So after my conversation with Dan, I do have an offering for Ron, a deity I never thought I would give an offering to. And again, it's a little weird for me, even now as I stand here recording this, to actually give an offering to a deity um, you know, that's an ocean deity, a deep ocean deity at a lake. It's still hard for me. I'm not going to lie about that. But I really want to make this first step in giving this offering to her. So this is 
a peso. So this is not gold, obviously, but it's really pretty coin. So not only does it symbolize a gold coin in the sense of, you know, the same way that is discussed in Heathery in the Sea, um, but also for me, this represents the first time I ever left the United States. Going to Mexico this year was the first time I ever left the country. And so this coin is one of the few that I took back with me uh, to remember that trip. And it is actually worth a dollar. So 20 pesos is like $1 US, but hey. Um, but again, the, the weight behind this coin is this, again, was the first time I ever traveled abroad, but also it's one of the deepest ocean connections I've ever had was when I was in the beach in Mexico and watched the moon rise above the ocean. It was one of the most powerful experiences I've had in the ocean since I became a pagan. And so again, this coin has a lot more significance to me than just the 20 pesos that it's actually worth. So, Ron, deep ocean goddess, champion of the hall. I wish to give you an offering today, an offering of somewhat gold, an offering of travels, and all the places I've been, and also the time I felt most connected to the sea. So Ron, to you, may I never sink, may I ever never drown, but I still wish to honor your beauty, your hosting, and your watching over the sea. Hail to you, Ron. The thing that I notice after giving these offerings is how much more aware I am of the water after I give them. I mean, obviously I've been staring at the water ever since I got here today for filming, but every time I give one of those offerings, I'm just so much more aware of the birds, the sound the water makes, the fish. Um, so I think I have a much more deeper respect for the, for the ocean, for lakes, um, for the deities of the sea. Um, you know, again, I really recommend the book. I mean, I, I, you, I don't talk about books too often on this channel and I, this one in particular, I just really loved and I read it in one sitting, one sitting I read this book. Um, so I really think you should check it out. I'll leave a link down below. Uh, so Dan, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this video, for sending that book to me and allowing me to read it. Um, because I mean, that's why I'm out here right now looking at this beautiful lake right in front of me. Well, thanks for watching everyone um, I hope that was interesting I certainly enjoyed that chat um, like all of my books it's available uh, on Amazon doesn't matter if it's amazon.com.co.uk .fl .nl I think, I think it, you can get it in Brazil now uh, so wherever you like um, I'll hold the book up because I know the spelling of my name is quite tricky sometimes there we go we've got matching books um, so that's that's Heathenry in the Sea, available now from all good online retailers as long as they're Amazon. Uh, and the Amazon taking the, the sea, you know, the, you know, it's a river, you know? Yeah. It's part of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it is indeed. So yeah, I think I have a deeper respect for the deities of the sea, um, and especially after reading this book, having this experience, so highly recommend it. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'm going to end this video. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, thank you so much, for, uh, Dan, for having the interview with me and sending that book over. Um, get out there. Hail the gods of the sea, even if you're not that close. Go to your local rivers, lakes, creeks, and connect to water as an element. Connect to water as it is and exists within all of us. Until the hall. Skull. <laughs>